So good morning. This is second session on revision of geometric optics. So we will deal with the topic of refraction here. And refraction is mostly based on Snell's law, very simple law. As the light travels from one medium to other medium, the direction changes. So pretty simple here. This is first medium. This angle it makes it the normal. And this is the refractive index of the first medium. And this is second medium. It's traveling from this medium to other medium. So in this medium, refractive index multiplied by sine of angle it makes with the normal is equal to refractive index of the second medium multiplied by sine of the angle. Very simple here. And what is refractive index here and what does it depend on? So absolute refractive index of a medium, it becomes, depends on the speed of light in that medium. The speed of light is maximum in vacuum and we can denote with a C naught. Any other medium the speed is lower than the speed of light, uh, light uh, speed of light in the vacuum. So any other medium refractive index is C naught by C is speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in that particular medium. And we know the speed is also is, is a wave. So speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. The reason why speed becomes smaller as the light travels from one medium to other medium is the frequency does not change. So whatever frequency you had in the first medium, this medium also frequency remains same. And since the speed changes, speed changes because of change in wavelength. If wavelength will become half, speed will become half. Wavelength is uh, speed changes in the same proportion as the wavelength. So we can also write the absolute refractive index as equal to lambda naught by lambda. And see, when it travels from one medium to other medium, uh, the direction changes. And what is the extent of change in direction and which direction it will change? That depends on the relative value of refractive index. So when we deal with two different mediums, uh, what is relevant is relative refractive index. And if we write something like this, mu21 is the common notation what we use. That is refractive index of the second medium with reference to the first medium, which is equal to mu2 by mu1, and which is nothing but, see, since uh, mu is inversely proportional to speed of light in that particular medium, so mu2 by mu1 is equal to c1 by c2. And uh, as you notice here, uh, many times rather than using mu term, it's also common to use term and also to denote uh, refractive index. And whenever we two mediums are involved, having different uh, different medium having different refractive index, one medium may have higher one medium will have higher speed and one will have lower speed of light. The one which has higher speed is called rarer medium, and the medium in which speed of light is lower is called denser medium. And you think this makes sense? The denser medium it slows down the speed of light. So that, that's the term which is very commonly used, rarer medium and denser medium. It is always with reference to two medium which are involved in refraction process. Let's look at some simple applications of the same. So one common application is what you call, when see, suppose all of you would experience this one. So if there's a pool of water in the swimming pool, so, you know, sometime when you stand and look at the swimming pool, when it is empty, you see a certain depth of the swimming pool. When it gets filled up with the water, it appears shallower. It appears as if the base of shiptic base of the swimming pool has moved upwards. Let's understand why it happens and what is the shift there and why it happens. So let's understand here. So this is, this is one medium. So this medium has refractive index mu which could be water, it could be slab of glass, any other medium. And this other medium is air here. So this we are taking a particular case of mu and air, it could be any other two medium. Okay, so here, uh, if uh, there's an object S here, which could be source of light, and it is at a depth per uh, H from the surface here. And all this case, though it is figure is drawn like this, we are taking this case, these two points are very close to each other. So basically, we are looking at the object from close to vertical position. So observation is near vertical position. So when we look from there, see, let's see what happens here. So this, you know how the image form here? Image formation, the light will travel from here. And to form image, we draw at least two rays here. So we one of the two rays we have taken as one normal ray. 
So here angle of incidence is zero, angle of refraction also zero, it will go undeviated. The second day we are taken, it goes like this and it is exaggerated. So it goes like this, this is the angle of incidence. And here this is mu and this is air. Air is always, air has refract, any other medium will be denser compared to air. Any other medium is, com is denser compared to air or vacuum. So this is rare medium, it will turn away from the normal. So after refraction, this is a ray like this. So these are the two rays which are reaching the air medium. So when we look at this, this is a refractor ray. How is the image formed? Image is intersection point of the refractor ray. So intersection here, it will not have a real intersection. It will have a virtual intersection. Intersection, this is the point. Uh, it appear to be intersecting at, or this is the point. These two rays are appear to be coming from. And so we extend here, this becomes the image position. So any observer who is placed in air, if object is here, image will form as S dash. So we can call, if I take this point as a reference point, which is the common uh, practice here, if this I take the now reference point here, earlier the object position was at a distance h, image is at a distance h dash. And this will depend on these two angles, and these angles depend on refractive index. Let's very quickly look at that. What is the condition here? So we have Snell's law, first medium, second medium. So first medium mu into sine of beta, and here mu into sine of alpha, mu is equal to one. So this equation we get here, tan alpha is equal to mu tan beta. See, it is sine alpha, but we have taken small angles. The small angle alpha can be written as tan alpha. So what is tan alpha and tan beta? If I call, let's call this, 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 this point is something, let's say this is AB here. And the distance is whatever, let's call this one as a distance D here. So what is tan beta here? Tan beta will be D divided by H and tan alpha will be D divided by H dash. If we substitute those two values, we get the value of h dash, which is the depth of image. h dash will be h by mu. So this is a common expression we get here. And uh, we can write in one more form here. One more form, which I feel is perhaps makes more sense. See here also this object and this image similar to what we had in case of reflection. So here we can write as uh, this is mu one by u u is the object distance and mu1 is the medium in which object is placed. So u and v are object and image distance from interface. And this is taken as origin here. And here dimension directions are irrelevant because both image and object are in the same. They are on the same side only. So they will have same sign. So sign is not relevant. Mu1 by u is equal to mu2 by v. Mu1 is two ways we can understand what is mu1 here. Mu1 is the refractive index of the medium in which object is placed, or we can also say refractive index in the medium in which incident ray travels. So incident ray is in which medium? Incident ray is uh, in this particular medium, mu1 here, and mu2 is the refractive index of medium in which observer is. Or we can also say this is the medium in which refracted ray travels. So in case of previous chapter, we talked about incident ray and reflected ray. Incident ray intersection was object, which remains same here. Object is intersection point of incident ray. And what is image here? Unlike previous case, their image was intersection point of uh, reflected ray. Here it is intersection point of refracted ray. And okay, so that's what we can use of. So here, if I have to substitute here, so uh, what I would have written, if I have to use this formula, uh, mu1 is equal to mu in this case, and uh, u object distance is equal to h, mu2 is equal to 1, and uh, image distance v is h dash. And I feel this is more useful, and we'll see this is nothing but a subset of refraction for a spherical surface. We'll come to that formula later. So these are two ways we can think of. I think this, to me, I think this makes more uh, logical sense, right? So when we talk about this, what happens here? So when we look from a rarer, rarer medium, an object is placed in a denser medium, it appears to shift towards the observer. Shift is, it appears nearer. By what distance it is near? S, S dash. What is S, S dash? S, S dash can be written as if this is a point O. S, S dash is equal to O, S minus O, S dash, which is nothing but H minus H dash. If I put this value, h, h and h dash, h minus h dash is equal to h minus h by mu. 
तो शिफ्ट इज इक्वल टू एच ए टू वन माइनस वन बाई म्यू सो दस अ डिस्टेंस इट विल शिफ्ट एंड लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर द टर्म्स हियर दिस इज अ शिफ्ट वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड व्हेन वी आर लुकिंग फ्रॉम अ मीडियम uh from a rarer medium and we can use mu term here mu and air suppose this was not air can we still use the formula here if this was not air it was some other medium in that case what we'll do here in place of mu we have to use relative value of refractive index this formula is even valid for other cases also but in that case we have to use relative refractive index and that will be equal to this medium mu divided by other medium Okay, and this is uh, we have uh, uh, looked at a shift for this particular case. But if we look at a general case, we will not derive it. But let's look at what does it mean. So this in in this case uh, here, the object is placed in the medium itself, or you can say object is placed in the at the boundary of medium. What happens after object is not at the boundary of medium? Object is placed here. So let's say if this is here. This medium refractive index mu, and this is also here. So we are looking through an object through a medium of refractive index mu, and this medium has thickness t. Will object look at the same position? No, object will not look at the same position. Because when earlier this rays were so, which are the two rays here? This is one ray. so earlier if this medium was not there of course it could look at the same point but because of presence of slab it will travel like this it will bend towards normal and again become parallel to this axis so this is how refracted rays reaching here if we stretch it back this becomes the image position here also we find it has shifted towards observer and what is the shift here we notice the formula is similar here also shift is equal to thickness of the medium the length through which it is traveling into 1 minus 1 by mu and all cases though all this though it is drawn like this we should always assume that view point is close to the normal this angles are small angles this angles are tending to zero small angles okay so so in, in this case also is valid and uh, we'll see later this is the case when object is viewed through a slab it may also happen see if uh, some image is getting formed if image was forming here if we place a slab and image is formed through a slab if image is formed through a slab image will shift away and what is the away shift away shift quantity is same so reverse effect happens and this is nothing but reversibility of ray here so this something if earlier if we reverse this arrow here this would have been the original image position but because of this slab here image will shift away by this distance so some this is more common and uh, this not very common but this also we should keep in mind some complex scale questions they may also ask application of this concept here what is the shift in image position because of presence of slab in its path If slab thickness is t, refractive index is mu, image distance will shift away by distance s, and this is the value of shift here. Okay, and let's look at simple application here. Simple application: see, this object is placed here, and there is air here. Then there is a slab of thickness of 1.5 centimeter, mu is equal to 1.5. Again, there is a gap of 1.5 centimeter. So basically, what we are saying: this is not one slab, even if they are multiple slabs also. can is the same concept still valid yes same concept is still valid here so when i look at this point p through two slabs here of given refractive index real given thickness it will shift nearer what will be the shift shift will be shift due to first slab plus shift due to second slab we'll add both the shift together by that distance it will appear to be nearer from the observer so very easily we can calculate since values are equal mu and thickness are equal s1 will be equal to s2 so straight away we can write the object shift nearer uh, by a distance equal to twice into t into 1 minus 1 by mu okay so we can easily calculate that term. okay now come to some more application and this is something of i think many of the things you can actually observe uh, many times you would notice if you take a glass see uh, when you start filling the glass you notice the base of the glass we start filling it appears as if it has moved upwards the shape same shift kind of things what you have talked about 
So let's look at one question. How much is this container here? Height of container is 21 centimeter. Question is up to what depth should we fill up this container with water? So that when we view from the top, most cases we are looking at view from the normal position. When we view from the top, it appears half filled. What does appears half filled mean? See, appear half filled, there's two parts, the part which is not filled and depth which is not filled and depth which is filled. See, if we fill up up to X centimeter, appear, appear depth will not be X centimeter. So appear depth and unfilled part should look equal. That's the condition here. So apparent depth of the filled part has to be equal to depth unfilled. So can we write this equation here? So what is the unfilled part here is easy to write. What is the depth unfilled here? Depth unfilled will be equal to 21 minus X centimeter. And if this is filled to depth hx here, apparent depth will be equal to x by mu. So this is a condition. And for water, it is 4 by 3. If I substitute 4 by 3, easily you can obtain what is the depth. Should we fill up this container so that it appears half filled? Appears half filled. Okay, uh, one more number of questions. This is some questions may also come about microscope. Microscope uh, scope is focused on a coin lying at the bottom of a beaker. So we have an empty beaker. The Be beaker is not filled initially. So let's try and understand what this question is asking about. So there's a beaker which can be, and there's a coin lying here. And we fix the microscope and we are looking through my school, a microscope. And when we focus, important pro pro property of microscope, what we need to keep in mind to view any object in sharp focus. The distance of object from the microscope is fixed. This distance has to be fixed. Then only it appears in sharp focus. Okay. So per object has to be, per, the distance is fixed. Now what they're saying, uh, this coin is sharply focused, means it is at a distance, let's call whatever distance, this distance at which it gets focused is D. So this coin is at a distance D, it is in sharp focus. Now we raise the microscope by one centimeter. The microscope has moved by one centimeter. If we move the microscope up, the distance will change, it will not be in sharp focus. If we look through the microscope, this will look blurred. What they're asking now, to what depth should the water be poured? in the beaker so that coin is again in focus. See what will happen if we start pouring water. Then. If we start pouring water, what will be visible from the microscope is not the coin. What will be visible is the image of the coin. And image of the coin also will not be at the same position. Image will appear nearer, it will shift. So when I fill up with certain depth here, if it is filled up with certain depth, so uh, image will not appear here, image will appear shifted. What is the shift we should have so that it becomes in focus again? This shift in the image position vis-a-vis -vis is object position should be equal to shift in microscope. If microscope has moved by one centimeter, this image also should shift by one centimeter, it will appear in sharp focus. So what is the condition if I have to write? The shift has to be equal to one centimeter. And if we have filled up water to a height is equal to T, this one centimeter has to be equal to depth of water to which it is filled up into one minus one by mu, mu being the refractive index, we can find the value of T. So what is another point we learn whenever question comes about microscope, because this is a very simple property. Question can be framed using microscope. And the microscope key point here is, in object should be at a fixed distance for it to be in sharp focus. Okay. It's also a very common kind of question. As a fish, there are two things here. This one is aquatic animal, and one is something which flies in the air. So there's a fish here in the water. And there's a bird here. And we treat both them as a point object. The fish is at a depth of five meter. The fish is from the surface is a depth of five meter. And there's a bird vertically above the fish. So viewpoint is normal. We can use the normal formula. This is equal to at a distance of four meter. So now fish will look at bird and bird looks at the fish. 
Actual distance between them is nine meter, but when they are viewed at each other, since because of refraction here, the ray will get bent, and the ray gets bent, they they look at the refracted ray, and uh, because of refracted ray, the image position will not coincide with the object here. So uh, the distance at which the bird will appear to fish, and the distance at which fish will appear to bird. Will be different. Let's understand what is the distance of fish as seen by the bird. First part, which is the object and who's the observer here? Distance of fish. Who's the object here? Fish is the object. And who's the observer? Bird is the observer. And so hence, what is the U here? How do we, where do we measure U from? U we measure from the surface here. What is the object distance? Object distance is five meter. I'll substitute u equal to five meter. And what is mu uh, mu one here? Medium in which the object lies, or medium in which the uh, incident ray travel. This will be equal to if it is water, we can take it. Even if it is not given, you can take it as four by three. Observer. Uh, observer is image distance we need to calculate. We don't calculate this is not observer distance. Observer, we, we don't need distance here. We will get the image distance from the formula here, which will be V. At what distance image will appear? Observer position is not relevant here. When we substitute this formula using this formula here, what are the values we we'll substitute here? Uh, in this case, mu is 4 by 3 divided by 5 is equal to 1 by v. This v, what does v mean here? Let's understand what does v mean. So if the rays travel from here, if I draw two rays, one ray will go undeviated, which is normal ray. Other ray which travels like this and it reaches the bird here. So these are the two rays which are reaching the bird. Image position will be intersection of this point. This distance is what we call as image distance V here, which is being calculated and which comes equal to 3.75 meter. So from the surface, image forms at a distance of 3.75 meter. So at what distance the image will appear to the bird? 4 plus 3.75 meter. Apparent distance of the fish as seen by bird is 7.75 meter. Second part, what will happen? The position will reverse. The distance of bird as seen by the fish Let's look at that. What will happen in that case also? And we can very easily find in this case, uh, bird as seen by fish. This becomes the object. And if this becomes the object, uh, mu1 is equal to 1. And observer fish, uh, so mu2 is equal to 4 by 3. And we can calculate value of v from this formula. So again, we are using the formula mu1 is 1 divided by 4 uh, is equal to. Uh, is equal to mu2, 4 by 3, divided by v. We get the value of v. So let's again understand what does v mean here. This is observer here. So again, if uh, this is, okay, again, I draw, redraw a picture here. Suppose this is the position of the bird. And we are looking from somewhere. Here, see, when we image formation, position of the observer is irrelevant. Only the medium in which the observer lies is relevant here. And only thing we assume observer is close to the normal. So how would the image form? We need to draw at least two rays. This is first incident ray. And if I draw one more, this is how incident ray is. And if we draw one more incident ray like this. And it's traveling into, and it will bend. Which direction it will bend now? It will bend towards normal. So this ray will bend towards normal, downward direction in this direction. So these are two refracted rays. It's interesting. These two rays are reaching the observer, which is the fish here. The fish eye will see these two. Fish eye will see the image at the intersection point of these two rays. Where would the intersection point be if we extend it back? It's a virtual image again. And this somewhere here, the image will form. And image will be at a distance greater than object distance, 5.33. And we can again calculate distance. Now coming to third part of the question. And this is the third part of the reason is why I want to use this one because of third part here. If the bird dives vertically downwards, so this bird start, is bird start moving in the downward direction with a speed of three meter per second. Yes, fish also can notice. Yes, fish is, fish can notice, but the bird is moving towards it. But apparent speed will not be equal to ground speed. How do you find what is the speed at which the bird will appear to be moving along the line joining to along the normal direction? 
and the method of finding is something very similar to what we have done in case of reflection. So we have the two quantities which are related and these two quantities are related, this quantity equation is always valid unless we can differentiate. So derivative, we differentiate both things with reference to time. This will become equal to velocity of uh, object and this will become velocity of image. So uh, if I write this equation, so one by velocity of object is equal to four by three velocity of image. Let's look at this here. Which one are we using? Where is the object and which is the image? Uh, uh, here object is mu one is in which medium? Mu one is one and observer mu two is four by three. That's what we need to use. So mu three, mu two is substituted four by three, mu one is substituted one, and uh, velocities are directly proportional to this value. So I can easily find this value of speed. So speed of image will be four by three times speed of the object. So by differentiation or by taking its derivative, we can find the speed. Only point important is which component here we are taking the component which is along the line joining to. If it moves in this direction, that we cannot calculate here. That's a different thing. There's one more thing I will do, and this perhaps is useful for some other things also. It has multiple points here, though I would say it is more like an optional point, but let's understand here. Okay. No, sorry, not this one. It comes later. So a beam of light, I think I mentioned earlier, is converging towards a point I on the screen. So there's a beam of light, and okay, so this is beam of light, I think this is beam of light. And if the slab was not there, it converges at point A, and that's where the image would have formed. Okay, what happens if we, okay, this is slab, and this wrong figure has come here. This is beam of light, which is uh, one, uh, one ray, two ray. And if the slab was not there, it, was, it would have come to this point here. This is where the image would have formed. If we place a glass slab here, by what distance will the image shift here? If we place the gas cement, it will shift from O to point I here, and the shift is equal to T into 1 minus 1 by mu. I think this I have covered uh, earlier itself in this particular point. Uh, I was uh, thinking of this question here. See, what does a beam of light mean? See, beam of light, even if you lay something, some of you might have seen something, uh, maybe use a laser kind of a pen, uh, which you can point as a pointer. And uh, that has an infinite number of parallel rays. So this is something, so it's a uh, number of rays are traveling and it forms a beam. In the sky also, sometimes you can not, uh, see that laser rays show. So you can see a beam which has certain width. So let's say this is the beam of light, which is traveling in air and uh, this air water boundary or it could be some other medium. It's a medium of refractive index mu here. So when after moving in air, where is uh, width is T? What is width is mother perpendicular. This, if I drop a perpendicular from one point to other point, that's the width of the beam here. This is the width of beam. And you know, but this is where the light is and that's how the sky looks dark. All of you would have seen in the sky. So when it reaches here, just let's focus on the two extreme rays. One is this extreme, other is other extreme. This ray also will come and get refracted here. This was a straight path. And as it enters a denser medium, it will get refracted. And this angle will be R. And this angle is I here. Same thing, this angle also is I here. And this is angle is R. Now, as it gets refracted, and these two uh, extreme ends of the two rays which form the extreme ends of the beam, after refraction, they take this path here. So again, we find what is the width of the beam. Again, we take the perpendicular distance, T dash here. So are this T and T dash related? Yes, T and T dash are related. And there are few other points also. Let me call this point as A and this point as B. If this angle is I, this is 90 minus I, so and this angle also becomes equal to I. And similarly, if this angle is R, angular fraction, this angle is R, this is 90 minus R, this angle, uh, okay, sorry, this angle is R, this is 90 minus R, so this angle will be equal to R. So in this case, I can write both T and T dash in terms of common distance AB and angles. Common distance AB and angle. So what is T equal to in terms of AB and I? Uh, T is equal to A. So T is equal to 
a b cos i and what is t dash equal to a b cos r so can we find t dash by t ratio so t dash by t will be equal to cos r by cos i so what will happen here is yeah, the width will increase and if we know the value of uh, sin i by sin r we can find the cos term also and we can find the uh, new width of the beam there are other points are also important what are other points important when the beam is traveling let's say this is beam are like this uh, two photons are moving together parallel the photon has started together from the source so this one this one we can is a we call something like wave front so if the light has created together these two points are in the same phase we can call this as a wave front so this wave front as it reaches here during this time interval delta t okay this wave, this particular wave front it moves from this point to this point let's move from uh, this point c to b so this particular beam is still moving in air during the same period the other beam which has started moving in other medium having referred to index mu it has moved from a to d here okay this also in the same time period delta t so this is delta t so it has moved from b to c sorry c to b and so what is the distance it will move what will cb be equal to cb will be equal to speed of light in vacuum c not into d what would ad be equal to same time because one once it comes here when it drop the perpendicular these two points are again the form the wave front they are again in phase so uh, what would uh, ad be equal to ad distance also in the same time interval t and but here the speed is different what is the speed now i will take the speed in this medium which is equal to c not by mu into dt that's the expression okay so this is the, this are the distances here but even the cb also can be written as what what is cb equal to cb is equal to ab sin i and what is ad equal to ad is equal to ab sin r so in a way if i use this wave front principle i can derive snell law from here so somewhere it is given and we should in some form it comes not i think it's kind of optional thing but uh, uh, yes knowing this one is good if we can follow this nice so okay let's move to some more question very interesting and this is something again you can observe uh, solar rays suppose this is a uh, uh, okay uh, this is a pool of water and this is again actually you can visualize in your mind or you can actually do you can is need not be big pool of water same thing you can also experience in case of glass of water so you have water and the what is given here solar rays are incident at an angle of 53 degree the solar rays or it could be any other ray this angle is given as 53 degree okay so this angle it is incident 53 degree and there is a pore of length 1.2 meter so depth of water is 1 meter that's what is given here and 20 cm some part of the pole is projecting above the water level this is equal to 0.2 meter so you know see when there's a pole here and the light rays are coming here it will form a shadow at the bottom of the pole the question is the length of the pole is 1.2 meter what would the length of the shadow be how do we calculate length of the shadow see first let's understand what the shadow mean shadow means part where sun rays do not reach because those sun rays are blocked by this pole here so what we do to identify shadow here yes up to this point here this is sun rays are coming up to here this will be this part will bright so what we do where the sun rays are not reaching let's find out the first sun ray which are up until this point r are obstructed this is the one which is not obstructed let's follow its path so this sun ray which is traveling like this it will come like this after refraction it reaches this point here at the bottom of the pool so this is the point this side rays are not reaching this side rays are reaching so this is where the shadow will form this is the length of the shadow at the bottom of the pool 
So what do you understand the shadow? Shadow is the part where rays are not reaching. So this is the length I have to find, and that should be fairly simple. How do we find this part here? Okay, the length of the shadow I divide into two parts here. What are two parts here? One part is this part here, and second is this part here. How do I calculate this part here? Let me call this length as L1, and let me call this length is equal to L2. How would I find L1 here? L1 is fairly simple. L1 I can find out from this triangle. This triangle is given. This triangle, uh, this side is 0.2 meter. So I can easily find this length L1 angle is given. This angle is 53, this angle is 53. So this length L1 can be formed. How do we find L2 here? This angle is 53. To find L2, uh, first I need to find this angle of refraction. How would you find angle of refraction from Snell law? So let's very easily, once I find this angle of refraction, that will be equal to sine of 53 into mu, which is one, is equal to uh, four by three water into sine of r. Sine of 53 is equal to four by five, is equal to four by three sine r. So we get the value of r, r comes equal to 37 degree. So once I get the value of r, at this depth one meter is known, I can find L2 also. So what is the important point? Why did I take up this question? To understand the concept of shadow here. Okay, this also is a common question and it may come in different forms. Let's understand, an observer can see through a pinhole. The figure explains this one. So there's a hole which is made and this hole has a particular angle which is important point. So observer is looking through a slit and slit is, uh, there's a slit here. So this is how we see. What is given here, object can see the pinhole at the top end of the thin rod. So this again is a container. What is given the diameter of container is 2H, height of container is 3H. And one side of the container, a rod of height H is placed here. And person is looking through the slit and only one ray can pass at a particular angle. He is able to see the top end of the rod. Indirectly, it tells you what is this angle at which the ray reaches the observer. How do I find this angle? This is H. So this height is 2H and this is 2H. Actually, it tells you this angle is 45 degree. This angle is 45 degree. This angle is so ray which is reaching the observer is at 45 degree. When the beaker is filled with the liquid up to height of 2H, let's start pouring water. So it started, so let's pour water. So angle of refraction is for 45 degrees. So this is how we have poured water. Now we have filled up with water up to depth of 2H. That's what is given, filled up to 2H. Now what is happening when the person looks at this, again, this is reaching, he is able to see the lower end of the rod. Why he is able to see the lower end of the rod? It means rays which are starting from the lower end after refraction. The refracted ray is reaching the observer. So which clearly means the refracted ray must make this the per, uh, refracted ray angle is 45 degree. Angle of refraction has to be 45 degree. And this will be the angle of incidence. This is the ray starting from this point has to reach here. And this has to be, this is the ray which has to come. And this you can see here. And so the part which is not visible with where we pour water, again, it appears to get lifted up. So this angle is I here. So my equation is very simple. What is this equation here? Fill up to height, then refractive index of the liquid. I apply Snell law at this particular point. And first part we understood this angle is 45 degree. That angle will not change because of the slit. So we'll write mu into sine I has to be equal to refractive index of this medium, which is one into sine of 45, sine R. And what is sine i equal to? Sine i, okay, this we can easily find. Sine i, this distance, okay, perhaps, okay. This is, uh, uh, okay, this total is 3h, so this will be h here. This also will be h here. So it means this length will be from here to here will be equal to h, and this height is 2h. So this, this h is known, 2h is known. Basically, sine i is known. I substitute sine i, I get the value of mu. 
Okay, this is a little challenging and this is a, a good question and this is the important thing to be understood because this is something common, this is not easily understood point. So uh, we have to understand very carefully. So uh, again, this vessel here, but at the bottom of vessel, there's a reflecting surface. There's a mirror placed at the bottom of the vessel. A plain mirror is placed at the bottom of the tank containing a liquid or refractive index mu. So this is a liquid refractive index mu. And there's a P is a small object at a height h above the mirror. So this point P at height h above the mirror and observer is at point O. Okay. And as I mentioned here, or only thing necessary is observer should be near to the vertical position. And image position does not depend on how far the observer is. The position of image with respect to the boundary here is independent of distance of the observer. That is not the power B distance. B distance is the distance of image from the surface. Observer is vertically O and he looks at point P. Now, actually, for any object, it is sends rays in all direction. So it will have, it will, object will uh, basically emit rays in downward direction and in the upward direction also. So when it emits rays in the upward direction, what would happen? Some of the rays, uh, yeah, it will travel like this. And one more ray, we draw one more ray and this also will travel like this, it will get refracted. So it will reach here. So one image will form directly with after refraction at the same surface. One ray after one refraction, one image forms. That is due to rays emitted in the upward direction. But that's not the only image will form. What will happen? The rays which are traveling in the downward direction. So rays will fall and if I take two different rays here, one ray goes like this, other ray goes like this. This will get reflected along the same direction and this ray also will get reflected. So for, if I take intersection point of the two ray, what would this intersection point be? Reflection through the bottom mirror forms one more image and that image, this rays also when it travel and when these rays are incident on this boundary here, the image formed by the plane mirror becomes the object for water air boundary. So where is the object here? That's important point. Let's understand that part here. So second image, the rays after reflection from mirror will be incident on the liquid air interface. How would this race appear to be? Okay, perhaps uh, I could have to take the figure down. So that image, it will appear to be, where is the object here? The rays after reflection, when reach the surface, if I have to draw the stereo, one ray is like this, and second ray which is coming, you know where it will appear to be coming from? The second ray will appear to be coming from at a point at a depth h below the mirror. Object is h above, it will be h below the mirror. So second, that's where this image. Okay, so let me call if this distance is x here. Where, how far from the surface would the object be? Object would be at a distance of x plus 2h. So object for water air surface which is due to image formed by mirror we are talking about second image image formed by mirror this will be at what distance it will be at a distance u equal to it will be equal to the x plus 2h. And so as far as this is concerned, and is this traveling in reference mu? Now, what would be the image distance? So this also will get reflected refracted. So as if this reaches here, it will again get refracted. And refracted a one ray and second ray, those two reaches reach the observer, and its intersection points five forms the image. And what how do we find the image position? The second image will be formed after one reflection plus refraction. That image will find using equation mu1 by u is equal to mu2 by v. Why I'm using? Because all we are concerned is about this region only. 
this region this becomes my origin and as far as this region concerned i only need to know how these two rays where are these two rays intersecting so what is mu1 here mu1 is equal to uh, liquid of refracting is mu mu equal to u value is x plus 2h and 1 divided by v so where does the second image form from from the interface v forms at a distance of x plus 2h by mu that's the second image and where would have the first image form first image first image which is due to one refraction only first image would form at a distance of depth is x x by mu it will form at a distance x by mu the question is asking is what is the distance between two images v2 minus v1 if we take the distance between two images so delta v will be equal to 2h by mu that will be the distance between two images all right so next we move on to something called total internal reflection tir and this phenomenon is occur, occurs only when the light rays travel from denser to rarer media. So if this is how the rays are traveling, and uh, so this is the uh, interface between two mid different medium. So this medium, it is traveling from this medium to this medium. This has to be denser and this has to be rarer medium. Or if I call this as mu1 medium, and if I call this mu2 medium, so mu1 must be greater than mu2 for total internal reflection to be possible. Let's understand why does it happen. And this figure itself gives a good idea. So let's take several rays. First ray, it has certain angle of incidence, I1. And after refraction, it will not go straight. It will bend away from the norm. Of course, this will have value of R1 here, which is greater than I1. Further, this point, as we keep going further away from this is a normal point, this is vertically above. As we go farther and farther away, value of angle of incidence will keep increasing. If this is I2, again, this corresponding to this, this also there's an R2. And what we are noticing here, as I1 is increasing, so is R2, and R2 is even greater than I2. What we find here, as we keep increasing, as R2 keeps increasing, at some point, R2 becomes equal to 90 degrees. So what is this special point here? At this point here, R2 refracted ray. See, all this point, what is happening even at this point also, at this surface, two things will happen. Part of the ray, this is incident ray. Part of the, part of the light coming here will get refracted. This partly refracted and partly reflected. Here also partly refracted, partly reflected. Both the things are happening. At this point also, reflection will take place and partly get refracted. But where is the refracted ray traveling? Refracted ray is angle of 90 degree. So angle corresponding to this, this particular position is called critical angle. So let's understand. And how do you find critical angle? Critical angle is angle of incidence for which angle of refraction is equal to 90 degree. Very simply, we can find a substitute here. So mu d, mu d into sine ic. I'm using denser medium so that we are clear about this denser medium to rarer medium. Mu d into sine ic, critical angle, is equal to mu r into sine 90, and which gives you value of uh, critical angle. So what is sine ic? Sine of critical angle is equal to mu r by mu d, or we can call this 1 by mu. We can call this a, a relative refractive index. So if what does mu indicate? Uh, uh, yes, uh, mu of denser medium divided by mu of the rarer medium. We can write it that way also. So this is mu is refractive index of denser medium with respect to rarer medium. It's very easy to find critical angle. And higher the value of mu is, if this in this becomes small, critical angle also becomes smaller. So at critical angle, it is like this. What happens at this point? This point angle is greater than critical angle. So this angle is greater than critical angle. If this angle become critical angle there, then no angle of refraction is possible. Here. It's already become 90, it cannot increase any further. So if angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, no refraction will take place. Entire light will get refracted back to the same medium. That's why I call it total refraction. Or another way to understand here, this particular ray, if it this ray, and it's of course all rays, all, all right rays, EM radiations have energy. So what is energy is incident. Part of the energy goes into the second medium and part of the energy comes back to the same medium. But in this case, what is happening? Entire energy gets back to the same medium. Nothing escapes. 
And this is a principle what we use in optical fiber. If an eye is greater than IC, no refraction will take place and light ray will not escape to the denser from give the denser medium. So if I take the locus of all the points here, if I take the locus, I am taking the sectional view, then we are corresponding from this side also. If I look from the top, this entire thing, if I connect all the points, so see, we, if you notice, in the if we take this distance from the normal, what is distance? Let me call the distance to be R here. So, okay, all the rays which are incident within a distance R from the normal will get refracted, it will escape the surface. Anything which has at a distance greater than R from the normal point, from the foot of the normal, from source on the interface, anything which is greater than R, no light will escape. So if I check here, just at this surface, I find light is coming in. Anybody who's right here, if he checks, then no light will reach here. So light will escape only from a circular region of radius R. No light will escape beyond that. And a reverse process also, if I reverse the process, the light is coming in. So if there's a fish here, fish is looking at the sky, fish will see light only into this part. Beyond this point, the sky, this part will look dark to the fish because the light is not reaching here. So from the outside world, the light from this part also, if any object is situated here, how would it appear to the fish? It the rays will come like this and it will come like this. This object will appear somewhere here. So this fish vision is like a circular cone. So cone of a circular apex angle. What is the semi-apex angle of the cone which forms here, which is visible here? The semi-apex angle is equal to critical angle. Okay, so what is the R here? We can easily find the value of R here. So how do you find R? Uh, okay, uh, a tangent of IC. Tangent of IC is equal to R by H. And what is tangent of IC? We know the sine of IC is equal to 1 by mu. I can find. So we can use the right angle triangle. So basically, if, uh, sine IC, if I write this angle is IC. If sine IC is 1 by mu, so this is 1 and this is mu. So this is mu square minus 1. So 10 I is equal to 1 by mu square. So I can find the radius uh, up to which light will escape. Beyond that point, light will not escape. So there are a few in interesting questions based on that. What are the interesting questions which can be formed based on this? So suppose in a pool of water, if there's a light source here, I put a light bulb here. And light bulb, we see if you put the light bulb in, inside the pool also, inside the pool and it's a, and outside is here. Light, normally we see the light will spread in all directions. But in this particular case, so yes, the light will skip the surface. I can see the light coming out. But if we put a kind of a, a circular opa opaque plate, if we put a plate of radius equal to R here, if we place an opaque plate here, center at the vertically above the source and its radius equal to r as calculated here this whole thing will become dark so even though there's a bulb light they will lit up here at the bottom of the pool outside area will be completely dark light will not escape that's what the principle of this means so if i put a something like this this is what will happen and same thing can be observed in case of glass sheet also if a glass sheet you put a light bulb if you have glass slab on the glass slab if i put a uh, circular cap here which does not allow light to skip. We, we keep this cap only of particular radius R, satisfying this condition. So it covers the region where total internal refraction is not happening. The rest of the part, it need not cover. So these kind of questions also, easy questions can be formed. Okay, these are fairly some fairly simple questions. A glass is reflective in this mu respect to air. Okay, the, uh, and critical angle for ray is equal to theta. Critical angle is given. So how is theta related to mu? Pretty simple. Okay, this is pretty simple. So sine of theta, so it, since it is a critical angle, is equal to 1 by mu. So something like this, if this is mu and this is air, this is my critical angle theta. What is asking here, if ray of light is incident from air on the glass. So if incident ray makes an angle theta, and if the incident ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium, R is equal to 90. This question is reverse. You say, what happens if the ray is incident from air to the glass with the angle of incidence equal to theta? So now if we turn normal here, if the ray is incident at what angle? At a critical angle. But it is not from denser medium to rarer medium. Which direction, first of all, it will bend here? 
Yeah, this actually bent towards the normal, and this angle of refraction becomes great less than theta. Question is asking what is the value of r? What is the corresponding angle of refraction? So again, we apply Snell law here. This particular point. Now the direction is reversed. How would lies Snell law here? Now it will be starting from this medium mu is equal to one. So one into sine theta will be equal to mu into sine r. Sine theta is equal to one by mu is equal to mu into sine r. Or sine r is equal to one by mu square. Or angle of refraction will be equal to sine inverse one by mu square. Okay, white light is incident on the interface of glass and air, and uh, this is something. This phenomena leads to dispersion. If the white light is coming, it means that all different wavelengths are present, and uh, we know. Uh, okay, if, uh, you know the light is composed of different wavelengths, and if white light is incident, this is typically what will happen. This was the original direction of travel. The rays get uh, its direction changes away from the normal, and deviation is greater if depending on value of mu. Okay, so here what we find here it will deviate away. The one with the smaller view, smaller view will have a smaller deviation. One with the greater view will have major more deviation. So what does this figure indicate? Different colors have different value of mu for the same medium, and mu of violet color is greatest, and mu of red color is smallest within the visible spectrum. Okay, so this deviates more. Okay, so what is given is this: what will happen? And as I keep increasing this angle, this will get more and more, and it may what will happen? Which will suffer TIR first? The first one to suffer TIR will be violet color. The angle of critical angle will be smallest for violet. It will be largest for red. So this question is based on that. This question is based on value of mu depends on the wavelength or frequency. Is maximum for the violet. Critical angle is least for the violet, and it keeps increasing for different colors. So in this case, okay. So if a green color has R angle of 90 degree, angle of refraction is 90 degree, that's what is given. Green light is just totally internally reflected. Y will not get reflected. So this Y O R will be on this side. So it means uh, they will emerge in that medium. Which two medium? They will not suffer total internal reflection. This will emerge. And these step, uh, this green will travel like this. And these three will have only total internal reflection, TIR. That's what will happen. And let's look at a question which indirectly is related to Brewster's law. Brewster's law is part of polarization. And some of you may recall what is Brewster's law. It's a fairly simple thing. What is Brewster's law? So basically, we say what is light? Light is basically we have, we have done in case of EM waves. Light is because of oscillation of light as an oscillation is of magnetic field and electric, electric field. And they are mutually perpendicular. Typically, you talk of electric field and any unpolarized light which have oscillation in all direction. That's why how we show unpolarized light, it has oscillation. Of course, oscillations are perpendicular to direction of travel. But this oscillation of all direction perpendicular to travel. This direction also and into the plane as well. So let's say this, what is the given? Angle uh, light is incident here. If this angle is spatial, what is spatial of this angle? If it is incident here, there's a part reflection and part refraction. And as this angle changes, both of them will change. There's a particular value of incidence where these two are at right angle. So when reflected ray and refracted ray are mutually perpendicular. That's a special case. And that angle is called Brewster's angle. At Brewster angle, the reflected ray becomes polarized, which also be, which, which component will have this component perpendicular components are gone. Only dot components remain. 
only this oscillation will remain and that becomes polarized light and since this component has been removed it will have access of arrow component so it will become partly polarized this gets complete polarized this gets partially polarized so can we find this angle here fairly simple finding this angle is fairly simple it's based on we apply snell law uh, only thing we two things we apply one we apply snell law and second thing angle of uh, this angle of refraction r which is equal to angle of incidence since r uh, okay so angle of refraction reflection and refraction if they are mutually perpendicular so i will write that angle of in place of angle of reflection i will write angle of incidence itself so that confusion is not there so angle of incidence plus angle of refraction has to be equal to 90 degree that's a condition we apply and then we apply snell law what is snell law sine of angle of incidence which is theta is equal to mu times sine r and since we are what answer in terms of theta in place of r we substitute 90 minus theta equal to mu of sine 90 minus theta so which gives you mu cos theta or tangent of theta is equal to mu what is special about two things is special if this is the angle of incidence satisfied this condition then a refracted and reflected ray are mutually perpendicular and reflected ray gets completely polarized and this angle is called Brewster's angle it will come to some more cases of uh, tir in this figure what is shown here this is a block of glass or it could be another medium of refractive index mu Shown an angle of incidence 45 degree at the top surface, and okay. So this angle of incidence is 45, and it will get refracted, and again it will incidence on the surface here. What is asking? What should be the minimum refractive index for total internal reflection at the vertical face? So basically, other word it can be worded when it it is incident on this. It is incident at a particular angle, and now again it is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium has total internal reflection is possible so if this angle is equal to critical angle or this angle is greater than equal to critical angle in that case no light will escape here so if you see from here no light will reach it will completely get reflected so this is kind of questions are very common so uh, what is this is angle of incidence has to be greater than equal to since we are talking of minimum refractive index let's do right one equation so total of a tir to take place which point point b tir is taken supposed to take place this point a i has to be equal to ic and uh, if this is 45 degree if this angle is r and this surface these two surfaces are mutually perpendicular if we draw the normal here this also will find 90 degree so very clearly we find this angle of incidence is equal to 90 minus angle of refraction here so that's the equation will form here so i let's put this value what is i equal to i equal to sine inverse 1 by mu has to be equal to 90 minus r what is how do we find value of r here Again, Snell law at point A. Sine of okay. So first, let's apply Snell law at A. Snell's law at A. Sine of forty-five is equal to mu sine r. Okay. Or what is sine r equal to one by root two mu? So this case also, I can take sine of both sides. So here also basically if it takes sine, sine of i has to be equal to sine of 90 minus r. i is equal to critical angle. So sine of critical angle is equal to 1 by mu has to be equal to cos r. Can we write cos r? Yes, sine r once we know we can find cos r and you can substitute and solve. So we can find minimum with the value of mu from here. So some more questions similar to this it is also similar to previous question so here what is given here abc is a cross section of triangular prism here and uh, it's refractive index given 3 by 2 and this angle of prism is the theta this is not part of prism this is a pretty simple question prism will deal with a separate topic later on and this is the glass slab here we see two mediums here two mediums here 
And what is given here? We need to find angle theta so that light incident normally on phase AB does not cross for phase AC. So this light uh, here it is an incident. Uh, this is perpendicular. It means angle of incidence is zero. Light will go undeviated. Light goes undeviated. So uh, it will fall onto the surface. If it does not cross AC, only condition it does not cross AC, that angle of incidence has to be equal to or greater than critical angle. Again, it is very similar question. So this question also, PIR, I has to be greater than IC. And what is a critical angle? Critical angle is sine inverse one by mu. What is mu? Uh, rarer medium divided by denser medium. So here, this is the medium where it, it is telling from denser medium to rarer medium. Sine of IC is equal to rarer medium mu divided by denser medium. 6 by 5 divided by T by 2. And second thing, basically this angle I here, is I related to theta? Of course, it is related to theta. Because if from here, if I complete this triangle here, if this angle is theta, this angle is 90 minus theta. And if this 90 minus theta, this angle is theta and this angle will be 90 minus theta. So angle of incidence is equal to 90 minus theta. So if I substitute in place of I 90 minus theta, I can easily solve this question also. And all such question, you all of you must solve. Uh, I quickly go through some more question. And this is a rectangular slab ABCD. Uh, it has refractive index of N1. This has refractive index N1. It is immersed in water or any other liquid of refractive index N2. N1 is greater than N2. This is more dense and this is a rarer medium. So this is a rarer medium and this is a denser medium. Right. What is asking here, a ray of light is incident on phase AB as shown here. What is the maximum value of angle of incidence such that the ray, ray comes out only from the other surface CD? So here also same thing will happen. So this is something, uh, this is the original path here. Very similar to previous question. So I'm doing two, three questions so that you just get a basic idea and you should solve such question. They're very easy. In this case, it is moving from rarer to denser medium. It will bend towards normal. So again, it may get refracted and it may tell something like this. So this will be, this becomes angle R here and it will be incident here and it will have angle of incidence I. And again, since this is to, this, these two surfaces are mutually perpendicular, I will be 90 minus R. And this must be maximum value of angle is this so that ray comes out only from other things. So let's take the A max case here in max case, I is equal to IC. Okay, so we have taken this maximum angle at which it is on the verge of TIR. Verge of TIR, this is how it is happening. Angle is equal to IC. So what is the equation? This is also very simple. Uh, what is IC? IC is equal to sine inverse and to divide by N1. And I will be equal to 90 minus R. And uh, how do you find value of R here? By applying Snell law at this point. And we can easily get the And IC is equal to mu R by mu D, the correct index, with reference to rare medium. Okay. They're all very similar questions. And uh, we should look a few questions. And even this question also exactly same principle, optical fiber works. Optical fiber has a core and it has a surrounding uh, medium, here. cladding is called, okay. So the one, this one is mu one and mu one is greater than mu two. This is a denser medium. And this one is a rarer medium. So we send signal in form of EM waves. EM wave also is kind of light, but it is a much higher frequency. So here also, if we put this, like if we send this signal, uh, at signal comes at some angle, it's an EM wave. We may not be able to see it, but you know, this wave waves are incident at certain angle alpha here. Okay, so what is the highest value of alpha for which ray can travel through the fiber without loss of energy? See, if this ray here, if uh, it gets refracted from here, and again from here, it gets refracted to the air, it would lead to loss of, EM waves and will lead to loss of signal. The reason we are able to communicate signal over long distance without loss of energy, because energy remains within the boundary of the core. All cases, as long as TIR is taking place, no law energy loss will take place. And this question is also exactly same as previous question. They're all similar question. And all of you, all this question you must solve. And up, uh, okay, maybe I think I'll put up uh, 
worksheet. I think we'll send, those are interested, I'll send a copy of the worksheet. You'll have the answers also. You can check all the answers later on. Okay. So that's all for uh, uh, refraction to surface. And next time we'll take up the topic of refraction to a spherical surface that I'll do tomorrow or day after. Thanks everyone.